Can you please tell me who you are and what you do? I'm Claude Granitsky. I'm the chairman and founder of True, mm -hmm. which is a New York and Paris and London-based think tank and cultural marketing agency. We work with multinationals and governments, uh, but mostly in Africa, where we're very involved in a lot of innovation and youth-driven entrepreneurship projects. Okay. And what's your background with Europe? What's your history with Europe? Well, my history with Europe is that I'm European in the sense that I am a French citizen, but I was raised all over the world. I was born in Togo, and then I lived in Washington, D.C. in my childhood, and then I spent my teenage years in France and my young adult years in uh, the UK. So Paris and London are the two cities in Europe that I know best because that's where I actually lived and, and came of age. And do you have to have a place called home? I don't unfortunately have a place called home because I'm a nomad. I'm one of those people that uh, Salman Rushdie uh, refers to as those who live in imaginary homelands. So I'm constantly moving around uh, between continents, between cities, but what I really, really feel is that there is a new cosmopolitan identity where you can be a citizen of the world, and that's really how I define myself. Well, for me, there's no such thing as the avant-garde when it comes to what I call transculturalism. Uh, cosmopolitanism is one way of defining it, but I call it transculturalism because it's a way for us to shape our identities by learning and borrowing from other cultures. So whether it originates in Europe or Africa or Asia or America doesn't really matter because the way that it expresses itself is through a fusion of cultures and hybrid identities, which is really what I'm interested in at this point in my life. Well, I've seen the tight turn in Europe. As a European citizen of immigrant uh, background, I've always kind of felt that we were defined as the other. And when I say the other, there was always a stigma attached to not being born in Europe or not being, quote unquote, a white European. And I never took that as something that was leading to defeatism. I always took it as something that would lead to uh, change because I always believed in changing mentalities through culture, through expression, and so on. So what I've noticed in the tide turning in Europe over the last decade, pretty much, is the new nationalism, the new populism, that is really painting this picture of the other as someone that you might want to fear. I've seen it in France, obviously, with the rise of Marine Le Pen and the National Front. I've seen it in the Netherlands. I've seen it in Belgium. I've seen it in the UK. All those major countries have um, a very strong political movement to pretty much um, paint the immigrant as the source of all the anxiety and the source of the economic stress and the social disorder in the countries. And my role as a cultural agent, as a change agent, as somebody who understands media and communications, is to paint very positive pictures of immigrant experiences. And as a European, I can express a different point of view on Europe because my own experience was informed by being born in Togo, by having grown up in, in Europe, and also having my professional experiences nurtured in the United States. So the travels and the experiences end up shaping who we are as new modern Europeans. And how would you define uh, Europe then? What's, what's Europe? What does Europe mean to you? Europe is a, is a feeling with Europe. Yeah, I have, I have a great feeling about Europe because I, I love Europe. But I think that Europe is experiencing an identity crisis at the moment. I think that young Europeans are facing a lot of hurdles, a lot of challenges, much more so than when I started my career almost 20 years ago as a young entrepreneur in London launching a magazine and having these dreams of changing perceptions of minorities through media. Now I feel that a lot of Europeans are not offered the same opportunities as I was offered uh, 20 years ago in London. And I feel that it's leading to a lot of frustration and a lot of resentment. And, and in my case, my role now is to help and nurture and mentor young Europeans, whether they're white Europeans, Asian Europeans, African Europeans, to help them to understand that the hybrid identities are actually an advantage as opposed to a disadvantage in the way that it's painted in the media. I think that the political situation is, is, is shaped by the financial and economic crisis that we've been experiencing for the past five, six years in Europe. And I think that that fear is linked to a perception of fewer economic opportunities for 
quote unquote, real Europeans. And there's this uh, false uh, perception that immigrants are taking all the jobs that were destined for actual natives. And, and this is what I, what I criticize, this is what I fight, and I think it's, uh, it's also exacerbated by the perceptions and descriptions in media who like to paint a picture of a society going completely wrong because of these social tensions. Americans are willing to change, and they're willing to experiment, and they're willing to take risks. Uh, Americans have made huge progress with respect to the political debate and the way that the immigrant dialogue is integrated into that debate. Uh, Obama, as president, has really said a lot of very interesting things about immigration reform. Whether he actually carries it through in his second term is still has remains to be seen, but I think it's moving in the right direction. So, as somebody who built a business as an immigrant in America and who then became an American citizen, I can say that I've had a very positive experience as an American who started out as an immigrant. However, I do also see a lot of tension and a lot of divisions linked to this huge extreme inequality that we're seeing in America. So there's immigrants who are at the bottom of society and who are not necessarily seeing the same opportunities as other immigrants might have seen a generation ago. So it's going really well for the educated few, but there's also a mass of immigrants that we don't talk about and who's are stuck in these uh, quote unquote working poor situations. So I think we need to talk about that as well. Well for me the opportunity is always linked to leadership. And what I'm seeing right now is an overall lack of leadership in Europe. I think that the populations are very disillusioned with the politicians who are running these countries. Central governments have lost a lot of credibility. And if you look at the approval ratings of the heads of state and their governments, they're very, very low. The real opportunity for me is seeing how Europe can successfully integrate European creativity and innovation in the new fabric of society here. I think that there's wonderful opportunities in the areas of culture in which I operate, and I also see the economic contribution of immigrants just through sheer reinvention and ability to adapt to new situations. So I'm very optimistic, actually, as to the future of Europe, so long as Europe is able to successfully integrate new perspectives and new points of view that are often brought in by the immigrants. Here in Belgium, I'm very excited to see the new creations of Andries van Noten, for instance, and how inspired he is by non-European cultures in his fashion designs. I love the new collaborations that are emerging in Europe. I love the film Blue is the Warmest Color and the way that Kashish was able to tell a really beautiful generational story of love without it, it being an ethnic story per se. I love the fact that Kader Atia, the artist is living in Berlin, having lived in France, having lived in uh, North Africa, and is expressing himself on the world stage out of Berlin. So I see these hubs that are hubs of creativity. London is one because of the huge artistic scene and the huge startup scene, which is kind of feeding into it. Berlin is another, but I feel like these metropolises are few and far between, and that unfortunately, those who are quote unquote different end up gravitating towards only a couple of these metropolises because this is where they're actually accepted. Okay, so you have these, uh, let's say, pockets of cosmopolitanism and then the rest is a, a very national basis. That's exactly how I, I see it. I feel like there's two Europes right now. There's a the very open Europe of Berlin, of London, and there's obviously other smaller cities, Marseille and, and others that I can name now, Amsterdam, but the reality is most of Europe now is actually into uh, being isolated. If you look at what's happened in Switzerland, if you look at the Poles and the rise of the National Front in France, you see that there's a big chunk of these actual populations that is only about staying within themselves and being around people who look like them. The thing about Europe, which is very different from American society per se, is that any sort of real change any sort of real political change, cultural change, social change must come from the state. So the only option that I see is further European integration and real will coming out of the European Union as the force for good as opposed to a force for division. So I think a lot is going to depend on the personality and the ambition of the next head of the European Commission. 
Europe has lost a lot of ground during the financial crisis. There have been signs of unity, but overall, we are being pulled apart. And so I think the, the challenge is really giving the head of the commission and the commissioners real power to actually enact change, as opposed to retreating into these kind of nationalistic, single-minded, selfish policies, which end up hurting everyone. I think it would be wonderful. The idea of a United States of Europe would be absolutely wonderful. And quite frankly, I love the idea of the United States of America. I think the federal system works very well in America. I think it works very well in Brazil, to some extent. And I also have a dream of seeing the United States of Africa one day. Why not? The main reason the European populations fear further integration is because the politicians have done a very, very bad, I would even say a terrible job of explaining the benefits of integration. And those who are in dissent, the politicians who are arguing against integration, have actually done a better job of communicating what is linked to the fears. So I believe that the new impetus must come from new European leaders. We need a new Jean Monnet, we need a new Robert Schuman who can explain in very simple terms why being together is better than being divided. And this should probably be a younger person than the, than the current candidates for the, for the uh, presidency of the commission because they're all in their 50s. Exactly. I think it, the, the, the change is going to come from younger politicians. I'm very uh, hopeful as to what's happened in Italy uh, this week. I think that the change of government and the new generation coming into power now, it bodes very well for the future of Italy. And I saw it when I was in London in 1997, when Tony Blair was elected, New Labour came in in a landslide, and that ended up bringing in a new generation of uh, British politicians who ended up contributing greatly to the growth of the UK. And I would like to see the same pretty much all over Europe. What I see in emerging markets, in BRIC countries that you mentioned, or in Brazil, where I was just last week, is optimism. I see the same optimism in parts of Africa. I see youth, I see new ideas, and I see risk-taking. Because maybe when you have less to lose, you can afford to take bigger risks. And so I'm very inspired by what I see in Brazil and other emerging nations. I feel like they're creating their new paradigms without it always being informed by the Western or European perspective. My new business is called True Africa, and we're setting up a pan-European media company that draws into our past successes in media, culture, and telecommunications. So it's a very ambitious project, and I'm working with some American partners, some European partners, and some African partners. I'm the CEO and, and founder, so I'm uh, pretty much driving this uh, bus, but hopefully many more people will hop on this bus and we can actually change the perception of Africa by also integrating uh, foreign perspectives and the voice of the diaspora. And when do you think this will all take, uh, take off? This is a, a 2015 project. Okay, good luck with that. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Joe.